Hey everybody and welcome back to Civics Review. Today we're going to be talking about the Enlightenment, also known as the Age of Reason. We're going to be talking about influence and its impact on people, specifically the founding fathers of our country. So let's get right to it and talk about the Enlightenment thinkers. All right, and the Enlightenment thinkers is a standard that we need to know and the objectives we need to learn about are what is the Enlightenment, who's this bro Montesquieu, uh, what separation of powers, who's this other bro John Locke, and then what in the world is natural law, social contract, and oh yeah, by the way, I've heard Founding Fathers, but I need to review it. But before we get to any of that, we are going to be talking about the word influence and what that means. Now, influence can mean to affect the development of something. For instance, in Ratatouille, when he watches the TV, he's inspired, he's influenced to try cooking himself. You might have watched that movie and been inspired or influenced to draw and animate. You might be influenced in the way you dress or style your hair based on a celebrity. You could even be influenced by a celebrity's dance and want to do that dance. And if you think this MC Hammer dance did not influence people like a burning match, you are very, very wrong. But in all seriousness, it's important to understand that we are influenced by many things. In today's generation, we're oftentimes influenced by what we see on a computer. But think back to the day, like the American Revolution. We actually overthrew our king, which heavily influenced the French to do the same thing in their own country, calling it the French Revolution. And now that we've talked about the word influence, we're going to talk about the Founding Fathers. Remember, this is a group of American leaders. They united the 13 colonies, they led us in the war for independence, and after we were done fighting, they helped frame our government and wrote the Constitution for the United States of America. So these founding fathers, of course, are George Washington and his fleet of attack dogs, his best buddy, Thomas Jefferson. Uh, we also have Alexander Hamilton, who's on your $10 bill, Benjamin Franklin, who's on the $100 bill. We have John Adams, a karaoke master, and of course, James Madison, the one who wrote the Constitution, the worst roller skater in the world. Now, let's not forget that these founding fathers who wrote the Constitution didn't just write it out of thin air. They were heavily influenced on what they put down on that piece of paper by other people. And these people gave them the ideas, the ingredients to create that document that governs us today. Now, it just so happens that every single person that influenced the founding fathers comes from the same time period. And that time period is known as the Enlightenment. You might have heard this word before and think, okay, this is where you do yoga, you become one with the universe, you achieve enlightenment. But the actual definition we are going to use is this was a movement. This was a movement where people sort of emphasized or stressed logic and reason over tradition. We don't sort of follow what our grandmother told us about how the universe works. We're actually going to think about it and try and make sense of it scientifically. Now, all of this Enlightenment thinking was happening in Europe at this time. Remember, the United States of America is a fledgling 13 colonies. Or we're kind of nobodies at this point in time. But over in Europe, we've got some big brains here. Look at Sir Isaac Newton. Remember, when he's attacked by the apple that falls out of the tree, it hits him in the head, and he starts pondering about gravity and what, what makes objects fall. Copernicus was another thinker who looked at the stars and said, you know what, I don't think we have geocentrism, which is where everything in space sort of revolves around the Earth. Looking at the stars, I can see that the Earth is actually going around the sun, as are all the other planets. Again, this is big brain stuff where they're using their mind powers, and they're using science to sort of look at all this from a scientific standpoint. Okay, great, whatever. How does this have anything to deal with civics? Well, once we started thinking about science, we started opening up to thinking about other concepts. And our boy John Locke here, who is an English philosopher, actually started thinking about civics and government the same way Newton thought about science. Now, John Locke was looking around at a lot of governments from the time, and he said, we have a lot of kings, and they claim that they have this power from God, this divine power, and that makes them a king. And he actually started thinking about this scientifically. Does that make sense? Are they really better than 
us. And John Locke came up with this idea called tabula rasa, which means a blank slate. He theorized that everybody's born the same. We're all born a blank slate, and then we grow from these experiences and from our own education. And so therefore, the king is not really any different than a regular human being. Now, this did not make John Locke a very popular person with the kings of the time, but like a true boss, he went ahead and he published this, and it got a lot of people thinking about, hey, yeah, why is Simba the king? Is he different or special than any other lion? And John Locke took it a step further, and he went out deep into nature, and he thought about something called the social contract. And he noticed that nature is wild. There's really no rules out there. I mean, at any, at any point in time, you could be attacked, uh, any animal, they, they kind of run around like they're crazy people, and he really started thinking deep in the tank. John Locke started thinking out there in nature, and he wondered, why do people not behave in this way? What's the difference between us and the animals? I mean, even the ancient cavemen had their own code of laws. They traded with each other. Uh, they agreed not to kill one another. So what makes us different? And John Locke began looking at government and people and our relationship. So he thought that people are going to give up some of their power and some of their rights, like their ability to slap someone in the face whenever they want to because they don't like the way their face looks. And they're going to give that power and that right, that face slapping right to the government. And in return, the government is going to protect the people from getting their faces slapped by others. And it's in this contract in which we agree upon that we give up certain rights, like our, our right to steal, our right to kill, our right to slap someone in the face, and in return, they protect us. Now, I hear a lot of people go, well, it's a free country. I can do whatever I want, Mr. Wright. But in actuality, it is not a free country. You are not free to steal. Okay, there are laws that prevent you from doing those things. And if you do choose to do those things, you're going to get punishments. You're going to get that liberty taken away. That's the social contract that we all agree on. Now, John Locke had one more idea. I know, it's a lot. He had one more idea. And that's called natural laws and natural rights. And John Locke basically thought about how human beings are born with these rights. We don't need a government to tell us we have the right to live or we have the right to be free, or we have the right to own property. Now, this might be a kind of a, yeah, no duh, Mr. Right moment, but think about it like this. When he was alive, slavery was still legal. Slavery was happening all over the world, and people just thought that these slaves were born slaves, and that was they had no rights. So this is kind of a big boss moment for John Locke to come out and say, hey, you know what? Everybody's born free. Everybody has the right to life, and everybody has the right to own their stuff. And now we're going to get to a new thinker. This was Baron Montesquieu, and he was from France. He was a philosopher who, thankfully for you, only has one idea we need to know, and that was separating powers of the government. Now, Lord Mosquito, I'm sorry, Baron Montesquieu, and the first thing my students say is he kind of looks like that senator from Star Wars, and uh, he really does. He, if you're not familiar, this is like the super evil bad guy in all six movies. Um, but anyways, he's more like Batman. Montesquieu sort of grew up with a wealthy family. His parents died young. He went to go live with a baron, his uncle. And baron is like an, a title for a lord or somebody who's important in the government. And then his uncle died. And so he inherited this massive fortune. He studied law and he became an enlightenment thinker. Now, Montesquieu's big idea was called separation of powers. He believed that if one part of the government had all of the power, that it would abuse that power. It would use it to do something evil. He looked at the UK government at the time. Remember, Montesquieu is a French philosopher, but he looked to the UK and he said, they're doing something right. They have separated the powers of their government into three pieces so that one part of the government can do only a few things and not everything. And in that way, there's more balance. So you can see the influence that these Enlightenment thinkers had on the Founding Fathers. They loved their ideas and they wanted their hair cut. So here's Thomas Jefferson trying to look like his heroes, the Enlightenment thinkers. Now the two thinkers came up with these ideas that they used in the Constitution. John Locke came up with the social contract, natural laws, and natural rights. 
and Montesquieu came up with the idea of separation of powers. Now, some people might even argue that we stole these ideas. We plagiarized them and put them in our Constitution and Declaration of Independence. In the end, I can see the argument for both, but just understand that they were heavily influenced by these thinkers. Okay, let's review. So, when the colonists felt that the UK was not protecting their rights and freedoms, what Enlightenment idea influenced them to overthrow their government and start a new one? And the answer is the social contract. Remember, if the government is not protecting the rights that we give up, it's time to make a new one. Last review question. The Constitution divides the power of the government into three branches. What Enlightenment idea influenced this? And that would be the separation of powers from Lord Mosquito. I mean, Montesquieu. Okay guys, that's it for now. Thanks so much for sticking to the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. We'll make more videos soon.